My name is Nathaniel Fairfield. I'm a PhD graduate student here at CMU. I'm Yash Gupta and uh, I'm a software engineer. My role is primarily the lead software developer and right now there's sort of three main software components. There is the onboard software that's actually running on the robot itself. We have two cameras for stereo vision. You have two eyes that can look at the world and because of the, the disparity in the images you can figure out depth. We need to compress the images, make thumbnails. They're compressed down, they're small, but you can kind of see where you're going and what's going on. We want to be really safe. We don't want to let the motors stall out. We don't want to push them so hard that they stall and overheat. We're constantly streaming back a little bit of telemetry data, the health status, the, the tilts, the pitch and roll of the vehicle, uh, voltages and other safety information. There's the software that runs the operator consoles that displays all the telemetry data that comes back from the rover and lets the operator decide if things are safe and lets them control the cameras and control the driving and where the robot's going to go. We flicker the left and the right eye images back and forth really quickly and it's synchronized to uh, shutter goggles that let the left eye see the left eye image and the right eye see the right eye image. The idea is that the robot's eyes are your eyes and that's really important for avoiding obstacles and making sure you don't drive into a crater or drive over a huge rock. And then there's sort of the infrastructure software that's on the moon. It's going to have to be driving itself to a certain degree. In other words, we put a carrot out in front of where it is, and it drives to that carrot. And if we lose comms because there's a snowstorm over top one of our radio antennas, uh, we want the robot to safely go to that carrot. And if it detects that it's rolling or pitching too much or its batteries are running too low, it needs to take the appropriate actions all by its lonesome because we might not be able to talk to it for a couple of hours. You'll do as much testing as you can in the high bay and then you take the robot out to the field and you drive it and you find out the motor driver stopped working, changing the code, and then you run it again until you have something that's really bulletproof.